Do you find yourself constantly thinking about the same things, things that happened in the narcissistic relationship? Do you find yourself replaying the same scenarios, consciously and unconsciously, trying to diffuse the confusion, trying to get out of the fog at, and get answers to the questions that the narcissist has left you with? Do you try to find closure by talking about your experiences with people whosoever is willing to listen, you just share your experiences because you want to be validated. You want to believe that you are not crazy. If that is the case, if your answer to these questions is yes, this episode is for you. Hi, I am Danish, a narcissistic abuse recovery professional. In today's episode, we are going to talk about why do you ruminate after leaving the narcissist and how do you end this toxic cycle of rumination. Stay with me if you want to get deep insights and understanding of the problem and how to overcome it. Also, before we begin, please make sure to subscribe because your subscription to this channel helps spread awareness about narcissistic abuse. Let's begin with understanding what this rumination is all about. If I had to answer the question in one line, I would say rumination is a trauma response. How? Let me explain. In the narcissistic relationship, you are constantly bombarded with issues to be resolved, problems to be solved. There is always chaos, trauma, and drama. You are not able to put stop to it because the narcissist keeps creating the issues. Why? Because that is what they need for their supply. So you feel overwhelmed. You react to the situation. You try to survive by running away first. We call that flight response. That is what gets activated initially. You try to avoid conversations. You try to avoid arguing. You try to avoid everything that you think will turn into a conflict. But that doesn't work. The narcissist is constantly in your face. They keep dragging you in into this cycle of abuse and you have to go through the motions. You have to face the storm until you are left feeling resourceless. It is at this point your survival mechanisms, your coping mechanisms shift and change. Now you may start fighting with the situation. You may start reacting back. You may start treating them the way they treat you. Maybe not entirely but to some extent. You start reacting. You start screaming, yelling, cursing. I mean doing things out of character. Things that are not a part of your true personality and that is when they convince you you have gone crazy. The gaslighting, the manipulation and all the abusive tactics they use to traumatize you keep getting worse. It is at this point your brain perceives the environment a threat big enough to activate freeze response. That simply means your system starts shutting down, at least physically. Your brain notices that there isn't a way out of the situation. You're stuck, you feel helpless, and you keep getting traumatized. There is this stored survival energy in the body, but there is no expression of it. Now, this is inwardly expressed through rumination. That is a very important point. Your brain tries to keep thinking about the situation constantly. Like on autopilot, it keeps running. Why? Because by doing so, it believes that it will reach a conclusion or you will reach a conclusion, you may find a way out. But as you and I both know, that never happens. You stay stuck in the cycle. This cycle of rumination begins in the narcissistic relationship and stays with you even after leaving the relationship. Once you have left, you are left with so much cognitive dissonance. The narcissist conflicting Mr. Hyde, Dr. Jackal nature. You are constantly thinking about who this person was what happened to you? Were you a crazy person? There is so much self-doubt. You're trying to resolve it. You're trying to make sense of what happened to you. You are left with so many questions and that is what your brain tries to resolve by thinking about stuff. Why is it important to understand? Because you might beat yourself up for not being able to move on, for not stopping thinking about the same stuff again and again. People around you might berate you, reprimand you, they might isolate you further by saying things like, why don't you stop thinking about this shitty person? Why do, you, why do we have to keep talking about them? People around you at a certain point get tired of listening to the same story, but they do not understand that this is a trauma response. It's not like you want to talk about it. It feels like there is no other way but to talk about it. Your brain is 
stuck. It's just repeating itself like a broken record. By talking about the issues, by talking about what happened to you, by talking about your experiences, you get some feedback, you get validation. A part of it is resolved, but a major part of it stays stuck. As I said, this is trauma and trauma cannot be talked. You cannot resolve trauma through talking. Why? Trauma is stored in the body. You may know about the book, The Body Keeps a Score. So does our brain. The trauma is stored in a deeper subcortical part of the brain, which cannot be accessed through talking or thinking about it. So it's like a trauma capsule that is stuck in your brain. Now, there are some exercises that you can do on your own, which can help you get out of the state. First one is body movement. You have to get out of your brain through your body, which just means that you have to recognize wherever you're ruminating, you have to recognize what is happening in the body. By noticing your body, you will get the accurate feedback if you are activated or not. The moment you notice you're ruminating, you're obsessing, bring your focus directly to your body and notice what is going on in there. Is there tension in your jaw? Do you feel your shoulders are tensed? You are clenching your um, hands and your jaw. Do you feel like your abdomen is sucked in? How is your breathing? What's going on with your heart rate? Is it too fast? Is your breathing shallow? What's happening with the couch or the chair that you're seated in? Are you fully resting? Or are you holding your body almost in the air? Drop the body, focus on the body. Try to find an area, a point in the body that is least activated, least tense, least agitated and stay focused on that. Stay focused on your hands, let's say, or focus on your feet. Whatever feels the calmest point to focus on. By doing that, you will be able to bring yourself out of your head into your body, and that can possibly end the cycle of rumination. The other thing that you can do is you can move your body. Whenever you find you're ruminating and you're thinking about the same scenarios and you are anxious, you're activated, you think you're crazy, you think you're broken, immediately start moving your body. Start walking in the room. If you are in a closed space, start walking, start walking. Notice your walking pattern. Start becoming mindful of how you're walking and how that is helping. If walking doesn't help, start running. Leave and run. Run, run, run. Why? How, how would that help your body? As I said, this is a stuck survival form of energy. It needs to be expressed and moment is one of the best ways to do so. If you're into dancing, do that as well because that will just give it a way out. There is so much in store. There is so much that your body has kept the score up. So let your body express it. You can also try trauma-informed yoga because that will help you to release so much trauma energy just by focusing on certain poses and certain positions and certain points in the body that are related to your traumas. You wouldn't have to think about things and you would just have to be with your body and let it do the work. You could also process it out by writing things if you are into journaling. But you have to be very mindful when journaling trauma because trauma is different. So it definitely will activate you. You have to try to stay in a relaxed body while you are putting your thoughts on paper, while you are trying to give it a voice. But if you feel like you are not able to deal with these issues on your own, if you feel like you need help, then definitely work with a trauma therapist who is narcissistic abuse informed. They will help you to make peace with the past, break down your past in a way that your confusion would be gone and you would see things for what they are. You would see them for who they are. You would see that you were victimized and you did not create this situation for yourself in any way. I hope you found this episode insightful. If you did, please drop a like. Let me know in the comments and make sure to share this episode. I'll talk with you in the next one. Until then, let the healing begin.